Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's a 2016 Ford F-150, it's the Roush edition. It's got the 5.0, fart can on the back, chubby rubber, and a service charging system light on. Uh, of course, the customer already launched the parts at it. We've got a new alternator and a new battery, and we still have a light on. So, McCoy and I have been working on this this morning, and I'm gonna show you what we found, or well, what I think we're gonna find because we've already started this diagnosis and we're gonna to try to simplify it. I can't forget to get some drums of oil. So we have a P0620, that's the code that's stored in it. And I believe the, uh, uh, the definition on that was, do you remember where it was? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what I think it was. Uh, gen generator control, scent circuit, something or other. Uh, McCoy will look that up for us. So PCM controlled alternator. So this is the PCM. And then this is our generator. Looks like a generator or an eyeball or something else. And then we have three wires. We have two of them that go to the PCM. One we're gonna call Gen Com, and the other one we're gonna call Gen Mon. So Gen Command and Gen Monitor. And then we have a third wire that comes over here to the battery. Goes to battery plus. Oops, this battery has two pluses. And then, of course, then we've got the big, the big honky battery plus wire uh, that goes there. What, what was the definition on that, McCoy? Generator control circuit. Okay, so we had that P620 generator control circuit, uh, just kind of a general, general fault. When we got looking at it, uh, the generator control circuit or the generator command circuit is the one that's having a problem. The PCM is having a problem with this circuit here. It usually puts out a duty cycle controlled signal to the generator and then it monitors that through the monitor wire. That's the very simplified version of how a Ford Smart Charge system works. I did make a video on these many years ago if you want a very in-depth explanation of how these work. We could look on our scan tool and we could look at the Gen Com data PID and it would say fault, yes, yes fault. So it would show a circuit fault, indicating there's a circuit fault here. Uh, our next step was to verify these three wires at the alternator. So first we checked the fuse that was on, that was on this wire. Fuse was good, power on both sides, and then we checked it here and we had power here. So th this wire is good. We had good power here. The Gen Monitor wire said that uh, it was commanded at 100%, so we checked that, and indeed it was. It was at, it was at 12 volts, key on engine off. Uh, the Gen Com, with the engine running, was supposed to be at 69%, good even number. So that was supposed to be at 69% duty cycle. So we probed into it, and we used our scope. This is a picture of our scope, okay? And indeed, we had 69% duty cycle but it was only about two volts, uh, which is wrong. It should, be, it should be higher than that. I wanna, I wanna say these run on 12, but this may be five. But we only had two volts, but we had a 69% duty cycle measure. And I'm gonna show you this, but I kinda wanna touch base where, you know, with you guys where we're at. So I thought that was kinda bizarre. So we go to the PCM and we check it here at the PCM and we're still at 69%, but we're at a higher voltage. We're at almost three volts. So that, that's kind of weird too. But the, the, I guess what I'm getting at is when we measured it here versus measuring it here, we had two different voltages. So what I did next is I, when I had the scope still hooked here and we're reading that 69% duty cycle coming across there, I probed uh, the back of our scope with a test light hooked to ground. It immediately pulled this signal to ground right at zero volts. I had the scope hooked here and it was reading the 69% duty cycle. And I probed the wire down here with a test light hooked to ground, and this signal stayed the same. So that tells me that the wire is broken, essentially. Uh, what we did next is up here on the PCM, we took, a, uh, we took a light bulb. Okay, that's my light bulb. And we hooked that to battery positive, and we had the PCM unhooked, and we stuck it in this wire right here, and then we went down to this side right here with the generator unplugged and we measured it with our scope and we only had seven volts, but we're putting 12 volts to it. Test light did not light, so that tells us we don't have a short to ground, but we should have essentially 12 volts flowing all the way through this wire, all the way to the end if it's intact. But when we checked it, we only had what, like seven volts, 
Is that what we had down there? Yeah. We had about seven volts. And as soon as you touch it with a test light to ground, it would go right to zero. So that tells us 100% this wire uh, is not broken, but it's corroded because it could carry current or it could carry voltage through it. But somewhere in this wire, there is corrosion because we had a small amount of voltage coming out the other end. If it was broken, we would read zero volts at all times. We wouldn't have been able to read that low voltage duty cycle. We would have seen just nothing. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go through the process of doing some of these tests uh, on the truck and make a little more sense out of the mumbo jumbo. The other reason I showed you on the board is because uh, the alternator is kind of hard to get to. PCM's not too bad, it's over there unplugged, but the alternator down there. Now I've got a front probe in it. I've got it in the center wire, which is our generator control wire or the generator command. And what we're gonna do, I'll just show you the same test, is we're gonna find the wire over here, which we know where it's at. It was pin 13, I believe. And we're gonna put 12 volts in there so I can show you how we identified, you know, is it corrosion, is it open circuit, is it a short circuit? And then I'm gonna show you what the fix is. And uh, well, hopefully, we think we know where the problem is. We got to deal with the noisy stool, so we're just gonna take a ordinary test light, non-fused too, because we like to live dangerously. Okay, so just ordinary test. This thing draws a couple amps. We're gonna hook it from that because I don't trust myself at this moment. We're gonna find the wire which is blue with orange here, pin 13. And we're going to stick, we're gonna stick the ground side of our test light in there. We're just back probing it. Okay, very gingerly back probed. Now if this wire, if this wire, reason we use the test light, we don't just stick 12 volts to it, is because if that wire was shorted to ground, the worst thing that's gonna happen, it's gonna light the light. Okay. So there's that. I'm gonna pull it back out, make sure that it works. And it doesn't, naturally. Make sure we got a good connection here. Always test your test equipment. That'll burn you if you don't, okay. So we have a good test light. We're probing back into the generator control wire. Okay, we're probed into that. We've got that sitting there. And then we're gonna come over on this side where I showed you we had that front probe in there. We're gonna use, we're just gonna use our scope because we had this out looking at the initial signal. All right, so we're two volts per division. There's seven divisions on this screen. So four, it goes from zero to 14 basically. I'll bring up uh, a monitor here. I'll bring up uh, volts average. Okay, so that's gonna display volts average. Uh, I'm hooked to battery ground over here, and I'm gonna take the positive lead. We're gonna hook it to the other end of this wire. And like I say, if all was right in the world, we would read 12 volts on it. Okay, I've got that probed in there. And we're not, we are reading, well, let's see. Well, now it's reading 5.36 volts. And hence, and hence. So hopefully you guys can see that. The volt average is in the upper left hand corner. So 5.3 volts is what we're reading. So that's all that's making it there. Now, if we check it up here, right? We should have, we should have 12 volts because we have 12 volts going through, through the light. The light's not making it to ground, okay? Let's see, I can, well, I guess we can just probe here on the back side of this thing also. We'll just, We'll go in the same hole. Whoa! This guy doesn't have very good eyesight. Two dongers, one hole. That should be a movie. Let's see. Maybe I'm not doing a good job as I thought I was doing here. There we go, okay. So now you can see our average voltage is 12.6, our, our uh, scope pattern's way at the top of the screen. So we have 12 volts here, five volts down there. And that is, that is open circuit voltage. So what that tells us is it tells us that we're dealing, we're obviously dealing with corrosion. Broken wire, 
we would have zero volts. A shorted wire, our light would light, our test light would be lit. But corrosion, we're gonna get something. You know, you're gonna get some voltage, but not enough voltage to carry current. Nothing that, like if we stuck a test light on the other side, like I mentioned we did initially, it just brings it down to zero. It's, it's not even gonna light an LED test light. So that's what we're looking for. Those, that was our series of tests that we did to lead us to where we are right now. And then this is where I think I'm gonna owe some credit is I remember uh, our boy Ivan at Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics was working on an F-150 that had a battery going dead when it would rain. And I believe that he found something very similar uh, had a P0620 and it also had, I think he, I'd have to watch the video again. It was a while ago that he put this out. I'm going to link it. In that video, he determined that there was a broken wire. And then what he did is he used his resources like we do. And he looked, he Googled it and he found a video put out by Philip Bailey on YouTube, who does auto repair, who put the location of where these wires break. Once, once he identified it was yes, a broken wire, he went to that spot and found a broken wire. So I was telling McCoy, I said, I think Ivan did a video on this. So we looked, I searched Ivan's videos and I found it. And he showed where he found the broken wire, which was where Philip found the broken wire, which is where I think our broken wire is. Cause I got down there and looked in the same spot, which is really bizarre. And I think I seen a little green tinge, we'll call it. So we're gonna go down and look. And that's what I brought you. I did all this lead up to bring you, bring you along and say that I think that I fixed it because I went on YouTube and found a video by Ivan, found a video by another guy, and we're gonna put out a video by this guy. So let's go see. Oh, come on, McCoy thinks we can still get the money shot. So here's the lower harness. So it's this, it's gonna be this harness here. All right, now see, somebody's been here before because the bracket for the transmission line, which is right here is supposed to go up on this stud right here but that bracket somebody has taken it off and bent it over but it looks like it's been that way for a while now we're going to come in to see what i think i see and hence and hence do you guys see that little crack in the tape right there let me just keep going at, oops it's not focusing come on baby well i guess that's as enhanced as we can get but right in that little crack of the tape so right Oh, yeah, let's see that. McCoy's giving us a pointing apparatus. Let's see. Right there. I believe that's where our problem is. Okay. Let me get a different pick, and we're going to get after it and see if we can get the money shot. This is kind of inconvenient to, to do here. Let's see. Let's see what we got here, boys. I'm trying to hold the camera. Giving you guys a one-handed handy here while I'm trying to open this up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see more green. Oh boy. You know what, I bet that, uh, well, I bet that bracket, that bracket must have been, I think if we revisited Ivan's video, and even Phillips, that, that bracket is what causes this because I could see like a little bit of old rubbage right here. A little tiny bit of rubbage right there. Yep, that's definitely green corrosion. And hence, oh, God, my face is too close to the screen. I can't tell if my eyes are out of focus or the screen's out of focus. So there it is. That's, that's going to be our broken wire. Let me set you guys down because this is kind of a piss of a spot. I want to get this tape opened up and then I'll, I'll try to give you guys the money shot if it's not already compromised. I think it's pretty compromised. So stand by. Get comfy in your chair. Are you ready? We should have some sexy music come on for the money shot. There it is. You ready? I'm going to make you guys wait. Nice and slow. Oh, yeah. I right, like that finisher. So there it is. There's our wire. Uh, would we have found it without the use of the YouTube? Eventually, yes, we would have found it. That wire is chafed also. Did using YouTube as a resource shortcut our work? 100%. I'm glad that I watched Ivan's video and I'm glad that I remembered it. 
about halfway through this diagnosis. And I'm glad that Philip Bailey took the time to post his video that Ivan found that showed me that I remembered that I'm showing you. So the next person that watches our video is really gonna have to give credit like three people back. At any rate, we're gonna fix that. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that because we're gonna fix this one too. And if I remember right, Ivan was really trash talking the, the crimp and seal connectors in his video when he repaired this thing. You guys will have to go back and watch it and let me know. So as a tribute to Ivan, we're gonna fix it with a crimp and seal connector. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. All right, as a tribute to Ivan over at Pine Hollow, that wire was fixed with some solder and heat shrink. So here's to you, Ivan. Uh, I've gotta repair the other wire. The reason I left that so long is so we can manipulate it, you know, in the harness when, you know, after we fix the other wire and then we get that one taped back up. So you gotta leave them a little bit long so you've got room to uh, bend them over. You don't wanna kink the wire off because you could stop the flow of electricity. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, you can't do that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna fix that. But let's, uh, let me get that done, I'll get this tape back up. I'm gonna leave that transmission bracket how they have it. Somebody took the time to take that off and just bend it right out of the way. I don't know what's going on there, whether they saw it rubbing and then they bend it or they, they maybe read something in a forum and tried to do it as a ounce of prevention. Um, needless to say, it was too late at that point. That's all situated, so now we can just just for the sake of demonstration here, we'll redo, we'll redo our test. I'll probe back into pin 13 there. Oh, okay, good. My wire is still, I thought I took that wire out. Stick this on here. Probably should have made sure our light worked before we start. Okay, yeah, the light works. Let me grab the other wire here. Oh, the right wire. We want a bright light. Okay, we got a bright light. We're going to come into the correct wire. Okay, it's not lit because we don't have a short to ground. And then we're going to take this, let that power up. I'll put our wire lead from it here. I'm going to plug it back into where the alternator is. Now we should have 12 volts. Falls right in the world. Okay, we're going to one-handed handy -hand here. There we go. We're plugged in down there. I'm just going to grab the ground on the ABS valve here. Bingo, bango. Our wire, our voltage here is at the top. Let me get the monitor back on here. Monitors, we want volts. Average. And it's saying... 11 volts right there is what it's saying. We may not have a good ground here on our ABS valve. Let me wiggle it. Yep, there we go. So now we're volt average 12.6 because I didn't have a good ground. And hence, so you guys can see that. So that's going all the way through. I guess the other thing you could do, if you felt so inclined to do so, is you could ground that wire there by lighting the test light. I suppose we can show you that briefly. Here. The smart thing to do would be to, to ground this wire with another test light. However, that's going to pull about two amps. So if I ground it with a test light, the lower amperage bulb would light. The test light would light down here where you guys can't see it. So I'll try to get it where you guys can see it. I'm probing into this. Try to find us the ground. There we are. And the light bulb lights when I ground it down on this end. So that tells us that the wire is completely complete and has the ability to carry current. So we made a good repair. And then now, for those of you who are curious, we can plug this back in. Push it the right way, fella. We've got to put this cover back on it. But before we do that, we can back probe this and we can see what that signal is supposed to be five volts, 12 volts, two and a half, whatever it is on a known good. That way you can put that in your little memory bank. Uh, we're gonna have to get the generator plugged back in here and then I'm gonna get this probed and then we'll kick the camera back on and we'll see what a known good is. Everything's plugged in, we're gonna cancel here. We're gonna go to live data and we saved a custom data list 
awesome feature on Alltel. It allows us to save certain data pits. So you can see all the tests I changed. I saved a set of uh, charging data pits. And there we are, generator command line fault, no fault. Before that said yes fault. So that's good. And what we're gonna be looking at is this command here. So 3.57%, that's gonna be a duty cycle. And uh, yeah, this is great. Go ahead and fire it up, McCoy. We're gonna see what that says and we're gonna go look at our scan tool because that should change. it folks simple as that uh, kind of a long video to just give tribute to uh, Philip and Ivan of course for posting their videos on this fix but uh, super helpful use the resources you have you know of course we have uh, factory service data but don't just jump to conclusions you know I believe it, you'll check that video that Ivan did I haven't watched Philip so I can't I can't uh, you know test for him but we go through and we identify the problem first which in this case check it here check it there we identified it as corrosion. We, we know we have a corroded wire. Now use your resources to see if there's a common issue. You know, working in a shop, that's a huge time saver for us. Could we have found it? Yeah, eventually, you know, we're gonna find it because we're gonna start breaking the system down and find what half it's on. But if somebody's already posted how, you know, how to fix it or how they fix it and where the wire was, especially if it's a common wear issue or a common rub spot, take advantage of that. It's not cheating. So that's it. Don't cheat me out of leaving a comment. Go down there. Questions, comments, concerns, Insta, Facebook. That's our socials. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.